SSH, or Secure Shell, is a protocol that provides secure access to remote devices and servers over a network. It uses encryption to protect the data being transmitted, ensuring confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity. The first step is establishing a connection. The SSH involves a client, or your computer, and the server, which is a remote device or server that you want to connect to. The server runs an SSH daemon that listens for connection requests on a specific port, which defaults to port 22. The client runs an SSH client to initiate the connection using the server's IP address and the SSH protocol. When the client tries to connect to the server, they negotiate encryption parameters, and SSH uses algorithms like Diffie-Hellman or RSA to securely exchange cryptographic keys. Exchanging cryptographic keys means securely sharing encryption keys between two parties, for example the client and the server, to establish a secure encrypted communication channel. This process ensures that both parties can encrypt and decrypt messages while preventing eavesdroppers from accessing the key. The next two phases include server authentication and client authentication. For server authentication, the client verifies the server's identity using a digital signature. This ensures that the server is authentic. The client verifies that the server is authentic by checking the server's public key against its known hosts file at .ssh slash known underscore hosts. The client trusts the server if the key matches, and the server proves its identity by digitally signing data that the client can verify using the server's public key. For client authentication, the server authenticates the client using one of several methods. The first method is password-based authentication, in which the client sends a password over an encrypted channel. The second is using public key authentication. The server knows the client owns the private key using public key authentication. Here's how it works. The client sends its public key to the server. The server checks if the public key is authorized by checking if it's in its .ssh slash authorized underscore keys file. If authorized, the server sends a challenge, which is a random message encrypted with the client's public key. The client decrypts the challenge using its private key and sends the decrypted response back. The server verifies this response. If correct, it confirms that the client has the matching private key, proving ownership. Next is encryption and data transmission. Once the authentication is successful, a secure encrypted session has been established. Both the client and the server agree on a symmetric encryption key, for example AES, to encrypt the data during the session. Symmetric encryption is chosen because it is faster and more efficient than asymmetric encryption for large amounts of data. In symmetric encryption, both the client and server use the same key for encrypting and decrypting the data. This ensures that any data sent over the network is unreadable to anyone without the key. In addition to encryption, SSH uses Message Authentication Codes, or MACs, to ensure data integrity. A MAC is a cryptographic hash that's appended to each encrypted message to verify that the data has not been altered during transmission. Common MAC algorithms include HMAC SHA-2. The MAC is computed using the symmetric key, so only the client and server can validate it. With the session established, all commands, outputs, file transfers, and data are encrypted using the agreed-upon symmetric key. The key can be periodically renegotiated during long sessions to ensure continued security. So to recap, after authentication, a key exchange algorithm generates a shared symmetric key, which is then used to encrypt and decrypt all subsequent communication with the fast symmetric encryption algorithm, like AES, ensuring data confidentiality and integrity for the entire session. Once connected, the client can send commands to the remote server as if they were typed directly into the server's terminal. This allows the client to control the server manage files, install software, and perform system administration tasks. SCP, or Secure Copy Protocol, allows the client to copy files to and from the server. It uses the underlying SSH connection to provide security, ensuring files are transferred over an encrypted channel. SSH allows the client to run commands on the remote server, transfer files using SCP or SFTP, or even tunnel network traffic through the SSH connection. SSH allows you to run multiple operations, for example, in interactive terminal sessions, file transfers simultaneously over a single SSH connection. This is done through a feature called connection multiplexing. You might be running a terminal session in one window, while in the background files are being transferred using SCP or SFTP all over the same SSH connection. Multiplexing avoids the overhead of establishing new SSH connections for each session, reducing the time spent on repeated authentication and key exchanges. Multiplexing enhances SSH's efficiency by keeping a single connection open while enabling multiple independent operations, whether it's running commands, transferring files, or tunneling traffic. 
SSH can tunnel other network traffic, a feature known as port forwarding. This allows SSH to act as a secure gateway for other network services that may not have encryption built in. There is local port forwarding, which involves forwarding traffic from a local port on the client to a port on the remote server. For example, a user could forward a local web browser request to a web server accessible only on the remote machine. There's also remote port forwarding, which is the reverse of local forwarding, where the server forwards traffic to the client. There's also dynamic port forwarding, in which SSH acts as a SOX proxy, dynamically routing traffic through the SSH tunnel based on the requested destination. And finally, there's termination. Once the client is done, the SSH session can be terminated gracefully. This closes the connection between the client and the server.